Hello and welcome to Surgery Secrets, where we go behind the scenes to uncover secrets about surgery you won't hear in the classroom. My name is Isabel Lucier, and today we are sitting down with Dr. Simon Turner. So let's get started. So first off, we'll get started with some quick fire short answer questions, um, and we'll start with some easy ones. So can you tell us your name? I'm Simon Turner. And what is your occupation? I'm a thoracic surgeon at the University of Alberta at the Royal Alex Hospital. And what does your job entail? Um, I do general thoracic surgery, which uh, involves anything inside of the chest, outside of the heart and the aorta, pretty much. So predominantly lung cancer, but any kind of malignant or benign disease of the chest. What's your favorite color? Blue. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Your favorite superhero? Um, I'll say Nightcrawler. Your favorite musical artist? Bob Dylan. Your favorite movie? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Pulp Fiction. Your favorite organ of the body? The lungs. The last book you read? The last book I read, I just finished it and I don't remember the title. That is all good. <laughs> Sorry. All good. We'll move on. Um, and can you recommend me a TV show? Uh, Bojack Horseman. Awesome. Underrated, <laughs> underappreciated. Actually. Very good answer. All right. So you passed the quick fire round. So we'll move on to kind of our nitty gritty questions. Um, so can you tell us your biggest influence career wise? Um, I guess that's, that's hard to say. My dad was a doctor. So probably the biggest reason I thought to go into medicine was because I saw my dad doing it and um, he was a great role model for me really cared about helping people that was his always his number one driver so I think that really made the profession of medicine seem like an attractive one and one that was worthwhile I would say uh, in first year med school I met a thoracic surgeon named Zine Valji who's now actually one of my partners he came to anatomy lab and uh, talked about the different organs of the chest and how you would operate on them. And I got to hang out with him for a few days and really just opened my eyes to sort of surgery. I hadn't really been thinking about surgery before then and thoracic surgery in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those are two people, two of a lot of different mentors and role models that I've had. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine how hectic and busy school would have been for a surgical student. Do you have a memorable moment in your training? Um, I think there's a lot of them. I think, um, you know, as a surgical resident or intern, you get to do a lot of things that, um, you know, just by being in the right place at the right time, you can save somebody's life or, or change the outcome of some of somebody's course in the hospital. I remember there was a, a guy who got shot in the chest and uh, was bleeding out quite a bit from this subclavian artery and all I had to do was just put a finger on it and it stopped. And it wasn't anything particularly fancy or noteworthy but nobody else was doing this and so I did that <laughs> and that stopped the bleeding and then sort of rode the stretcher to the operating room and somebody else came and did all the fancy surgery. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was doing by that point, but that was a pretty cool feeling. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about a recent memorable moment at work? Um, I would say recently the things that stand out are the, the difficult cases. Um, people that you take to the operating room and you can't get all the cancer out and you have to stop. Um, or people that you meet and unfortunately the cancer is spread too far by the time you've met them. I think sometimes as students and residents, we don't really take on the weight of that, which I think is good. Trainees really shouldn't, shouldn't have to shoulder that responsibility, but it's something that I think you need to be aware of. Uh, that's part of the job, especially when you're doing a lot of cancer surgery, which there's a lot of cancer surgery in thoracics. Mm -hmm. um, and your job obviously isn't an easy one. Um, and it's hard for me to even comprehend what it's like for you in those moments. Is there anything that people don't understand about your job? 
I would say the biggest misconception is that it, it's some kind of heroic thing or it's some kind of thing that, you know, only certain people could do. I do think there's certain people who are more suited for it and there are definitely people who are better at it than others, but it, it's just regular people doing their job. I think sometimes people, people, um, you know, say things like that. Oh, I couldn't imagine what it would be like. And I know it's very hard to imagine, but it, at the end of the day, it's, it's just a bunch of normal men and women getting out of bed, going to work and doing their best. And when you think of it that way, I think it, it sort of takes some of the mystique and some of the, um, you know, impossibility out of it for students. I think maybe looking at surgery, it sort of seems so daunting, but at the end of the day, it's just normal people. Mm -hmm. They do. So what would you say is the absolute best part of your job? I'd say the best part of my job is just that I, I really enjoy it start to finish. I, you know, meeting people, getting to share their stories and, and, and find out what, what's bothering them, find out a way to fix them. And then just the, the satisfaction of uh, knowing that you fixed a problem with your own two hands mm -hmm. and your brain is just incredibly satisfying. And it's a lot of fun and it's really rewarding. And I think the fact that it's fun sort of gets overlooked as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess on the other end of that, what would you say is the worst part about your job? Um, I think the worst part is, is, you know, when you can't fix somebody and uh, when you've tried your best, either you've done an operation as best you know how, and then it, it doesn't work. Either the cancer comes back or, or something doesn't heal properly or, or you find out that you can't operate on somebody that's really, uh, really hard to handle. We take a lot of personal responsibility as surgeons because we get that gratitude or the, uh, you know, that instant feedback of, of thinking, oh, I fixed somebody. And there's that gratification, I guess is where I'm looking for. Um, but with that also comes a lot of uh, responsibility when things don't go well. So there's sort of two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So I guess kind of day to day looking at your job, is there any moments that stand out to you that were kind of like the weirdest or messiest surgery that you've ever done? Um, I think maybe the weirdest thing that I ever had happened to me was uh, when I was a general surgery resident, we had a trauma patient and they brought a, brought a patient in. They, they found him sort of lying on the side of the road. Um, they don't know how he got there and he was sort of sleeping on this object and they passed me a garbage bag that had the object that he was using as his pillow and it was his foot and nobody really knew how his foot came to be detached from him and why he was using it as a pillow and he wouldn't tell us and it was quite strange oh it was just really really weird that is really strange were you yeah. able to do anything with the foot or was that no i think it was you know it was too late by that point <laughs> he ended up just having his amputation cleaned up it was it, i don't think anybody ever got a story out of him as to what happened oh my goodness that is so funny so i can only imagine the stories you have and and the the stories you tell to your friends and family um, do you have a strong support system um, that kind of helps you along when, when the job gets a bit tougher? Yeah, I think that's really important. I think people that don't have that, um, I don't know how they get through the day-to-day -day life. Um, my parents have always been really supportive of my training going through and especially in residency, it's a lot of uh, sleepless nights and things like that. And so you need to have help like that. My partner right now is uh, incredibly supportive. My friends, a lot of my friends are in medicine, so you know, they sort of understand what, what it's like. And it's nice to be able to open up a beer at the end of the day and sit down and talk with people who, who understand what, you, what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So when you were in school, did you ever imagine yourself living your current life? Um, I guess yes and no. I, I think I had a bit of insight because of uh, what my dad did. He did a very different type of medicine, so his lifestyle was a bit different. I think I probably, once I knew I was going to be a surgeon, I probably thought my life would be harder than it is, to be honest. I, I think I have a great life. I don't work a ton in the middle of the night. I uh, have a reasonable lifestyle. Um, I, I don't, I think 
from both good and bad things, it's hard to understand what your life is going to be like until you actually do it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to understand how great it's going to be, um, how great the job is, but also hard to understand what the commitment is, what the responsibility is like until you just go through it. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't doing your current job, what career would you most like to do? I think I'd probably do something in education. I'm really interested in, in teaching. I do a lot of teaching of med students and residents and I really enjoy that. I think if I hadn't gone into medicine, I probably would have gone into education. So now if you go back, this is kind of our, our last question here. What advice would you give your younger self or someone considering your career? I guess my younger self, I would just say go for it because I, I think I've, I've been really happy with the choices I've made in terms of where it's gotten me. I'm, I'm just thrilled with my job right now, my life and my career. I think looking back before I got into medical school, I, I think it's just mind boggling to think of, of a pre-med student. They just have no idea what they're in for. It's going to be, you know, decades of training potentially and doing a job that you really have no concept of what it's like. So I think you have to really be sure that this is what you want to do, that um, being committed to taking care of patients is going to be something that you can do for the rest of your career. Otherwise, you know, if you don't really, really want it at the end of the day, it's probably not the best thing to do. There's easier ways to make money than, than doing this. So you would still recommend being a surgeon to people if they really love it? Absolutely. I love it. I think it's absolutely the best thing I ever did. Um, I tell, I always tell students who are unsure if they want to do surgery or something else. If you love surgery and that's the only thing you can do, then you have to do it because you'll be miserable otherwise. And you'll wish you were doing it. If there are two things that you love equally and one of them's not surgery, you should probably do the other thing. <laughs> it's probably going to be easier. And there'll be a lot of nights where you're up at three in the morning thinking, well, I could have been a pediatrician and I'd be at home in bed right now. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're 50, 50, do the other thing. But if you're like me, then surgery is the only thing you could do mm -hmm. and you'll be miserable if you don't do it. So go for it. Well, thank you so much, um, Dr. Turner for joining us today on Surgery Secrets. It was a pleasure to have you join our series. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, my pleasure. So there you have it. Join us next time for another exclusive look into surgery today. Follow us on LinkedIn for new Surgery Secrets episodes and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information on Surgery 101, head to our website, surgery101.org. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.